Thursday, October 17, 2024, a 26-year-old YouTuber was approached by three men dressed as police officers with M16s. By the time he realized they were not police, it was too late, as he was grabbed and thrown onto a boat and the kidnappers took off south. This is just such a depressing but stupid situation to cover, as the whole thing was extremely avoidable, and he had so many chances to save himself. But who is this man? Well, he's an American IRL streamer who's been building a following off of, in quote, living in the Philippines' most dangerous area as an American. That sounds like a terrible idea. Pro tip, if most of the citizens avoid a portion of their country, it's best you do as well. The Australian government straight up says, do not travel here. And the FBI also states, do not travel to the area that he's in. Yet for some reason, he decided to go there and he found a wife. I don't know if he knows, but being a passport bro doesn't have to be an extreme sport. If you really care about your life, you can find someone in an area that doesn't have a do not travel warning by multiple Western governments. Bruh. According to a Sun article, it says a witness claimed the Vermont native was shoved into a white speedboat just after 11 p.m. on Thursday in a remote town he'd been living in. Local resident Abdumali Hamsiranjala told cops that the four armed men pretended to be police officers when they forcibly took the YouTuber who tried to escape. Abdumali said the men were dressed in black and armed with M16 rifles. One of the gunmen allegedly shot Elliot's leg before he dragged him onto the- I'm gonna be real with you. I'd rather this than the US cops, to be real with you. This sounds like this is being polite. I'd rather that happen to me than to deal with white cops, bro. They, hey, they, any, any cop better than white cop, bro, I don't care speedboat then fled by sea further south oh what a horrible situation cops worked tirelessly to chase the suspects and the youtuber but failed to locate them so he alerted other police and local marine units they said we confirmed that there was a report of an alleged abduction of an american national we want to assure the public particularly the community of Saboko, that we're doing everything in our power to secure the safe recovery of the victim. The police asked the public to immediately provide any information they could help in the ongoing investigation of the reported abduction. So this is just nothing short of absolutely horrifying. And it's depressing that best case scenario, this is a hostage ransom situation, as the other alternative is he's gone. This sucks. I, I can't believe he would do that to himself. Why would he ever put himself in this situation? As he clearly acknowledged the danger here, as his first video is titled, Living in the Most Dangerous Area of the Philippines, Red Zone. Then in the description, he wrote, Sambuanga is one of the deadliest areas in the Philippines for foreigners. Okay, bro, why are you here then? A and what makes this super eerie is he talked about this on his live streams which he streamed multiple times a day. Like this guy was broadcasting all the time. Everybody's telling me right now, there's people out there planning, planning to come get me, bro. No, but that's true though. People, there's people coming here to tell my family that. There's people that want to kidnap me or they're threatening to kidnap me or stuff like that, like every day. Every day, this is happening. This is like a real life. Yeah, that's your sign of fucking leave. I'm gonna be real with you. That's your sign to leave and yeah, go back to whatever country you came to. You know, came from. If someone's threatening you and like, don't go in a bad area in that country. Go in a good area, but not in the bad side. That's what I meant to say. Uh, yeah. If someone's threatening you already, you should have been left. Thing for me here. He's a warning. No, no foreigners or no any other. There's no tourists staying here. Because they're, they're smarter than that. But for me, I've been living here, I've been taking this chance. You know, even last night, I'm scared a little bit. I'm scared. Why are you still here then? His whole logic is rooted in survivor bias, which clearly can only get you so far. If you live in a red zone, AKA a do not travel to area because of kidnappings and ransom, and a bunch of people are coming to your family regularly, saying hey there's a plot for this grab your family and leave why would you ever stay sure even if it's a false alarm at least you dodge that nightmare situation it's been many nights in this house where i'm just been scared dude. Well, that's why i dyed my hair black maybe i look more like a filipino man right or maybe not <laughs> dude <laughs> Coloring his hair is the least of his worries. That's absolutely not going to fix his problems. And if it comes to the point where it's like, all of a sudden I'm kidnapped and something's going to happen to me, 
I'm gonna ask myself. I don't know. Yeah, it's like everybody's saying that, you know, you should just go home. Like, this is literally the, my third time down here. Living in this house. It's my third time. The first time I came here, it was like one month or something. Or like two months I stayed here and then I went home. The second time, it was six months I stayed here and then I went home. Because all because of these kidnapping stories and shit like that. Yeah, I don't know if I believe it either. I wish I could just, yeah. I don't know, I'd rather just travel around. Like, I like this country, but like, I don't like feeling like I'm stuck here either. That's kind of sucks, but I'm not complaining. Like, I like the situation I'm in, I'm just... Well, you know, it's a real story. My wife, she was in school. She was in school, bro. I don't know what, it was like fifth grade or something. And then these kidnappers came into their school with guns. And they took one of those young girls whose parents were from like Canada or something like that. So they knew that they had money, right? They knew they had money. So those people took that, that girl and they held her for a ransom. They held her for a ransom of like, I don't know what it was, $40,000 or $50,000, something like that. So this is real. This is not like, I know it's like, some stories too, but this is real too. My wife had this happen to me in her class. She had a gun pointed at her head by one of these kidnappers. So I believe, because my wife told me that story that happened to her. She had a gun pointed to her face in fifth grade at school. And then they took one of those girls and they held her for ransom. Because just all because her parents were like some higher up in the Canada or something like that. Like nothing, probably nothing that special. I don't know, but like, because their parents were like foreigners. And now that's what they're trying to do to me. That's what these same people are planning and trying, have been planning to do to me. Okay, so he tells this detailed story of exactly what he's afraid of. And then he's absolutely not keeping a low profile as he's the only white dude there who's live streaming daily. Then to make everything worse for himself, the last thing we know that he was doing for money was operating a quick cash payday lending business, which he admits to in this vlog. Investing some money in our business this morning. We had a guy who we're investing some money with. He came by. He gave us the money that we lent him plus some profit. We gave him extra so that our money is coming back more next time. So... So you go to a no-go red zone because the area is known for kidnapping and ransom. And then you start operating as a... Hey man, don't get mad at him. He probably just wanted to experience his first experience. That maybe he just wanted to live it just to see for himself if it's actually a actual, you know, kidnapping or something. Maybe he just wanted to go there just to experience it the first time. Shit, who knows? I mean, shit, I ain't hating him bank slash payday lender then broadcast it on the internet every day bless his heart i hope he survives but the odds are not stacked in his favor especially if he was shot in the leg presumably with an m16 because that's what was reported they had unless he was grazed you're, you're gonna need a whole lot of medical attention to stop that bleeding and potentially a blood transfusion. You, you could Google the exit wounds. That's nothing pretty. And you would think if this was for ransom, why would they ever shoot him? Since, you know, if he's gone, they lose their bargaining chips. But the FBI, they've actually been on the scene already. So at least they're, they're interviewing the family and they're showing their presence and they currently have a person of interest. But that's really just where we're at right now. So he was kidnapped on the 17th and I'm recording this on the 22nd. So, I mean, he's he's been gone for what, five days roughly. It's just depressing that all of this could have easily been avoided. It's not worth going to a red zone for some clickbait. Your life is way more important than that. I guess all we can really do is just pray they find him alive, but this is definitely a more depressing story. Catch you guys in the next one. That's it for this video.